Hey everyone, Gaijin Goomba here. You know, every time I meet someone at a con or just out and about, I always get asked this one specific question. Hey Gaijin, what's your favorite anime so far this year? I'm really loving Kobayashi's Maid Dragon. Yeah, it's pretty cool, but personally I've been loving this anime called Sengoku Choju Giga. Oh really? Show me! Um, okay. <laughs> Okay, look, I know this isn't exactly a super popular anime, and I seriously doubt a lot of people even know what it is or what it's about, and I sure as hell know YouTube's algorithm would much prefer I talk about something like Kobayashi's Maid Dragon. But f*** the algorithm! I love this anime, and you should too. No, there aren't a bunch of big fat tits or utterly adorable moe characters, but this show doesn't need that, because in the insanely short 4 minute runtime per episode, this anime is not only gonna make you laugh, it's gonna make you smart for watching it. Okay, a little back history. You might think this anime doesn't even come close to being an anime, but believe it or not, this anime existed long before anime was even a thing. Confused yet? Well, check this out. The art stylings of Sengoku Choju Giga comes from what's touted as Japan's first ever manga called Choju Jinbutsu Giga or Scrolls of Frolicking Animals. Created in the 12th century, four stylized scrolls told stories of anthropomorphic animals like monkeys, frogs, rabbits, and so on, either interacting with themselves or taking on the role of various professions. To be honest, this might actually be Japan's very first political satire on top of being their first ever manga. I'm from New York, it's Saturday night! <laughs> oh my god, that is hilarious! And because of that title of first manga ever, the scrolls are considered national treasures and are housed in prominent locations, like the Tokyo and Kyoto National Museums. In fact, these first manga are so beloved and so well known in Japan that in 2016, Studio Ghibli made a commercial short using this very style. But that's only talking about the artistic style of this show, the Choju Giga so to speak. But what of the historical? What of the Sengoku? Well, that is what makes this anime so damn magical. As many of you have likely put together, this anime takes place during the Sengoku Jidai or Warring States period of Japan predominantly between 1500 and 1650 during the era of the three great shogun Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and Ieyasu Tokugawa. But it also includes other famous figures like Akechi Mitsuhide, Shingen Takeda, and other big names during this time period. And this show presents them not only in a way that is completely accurate to history, but done so in such a wonderfully dry manner of humor. For example, in episode 1 we see Nobunaga getting all excited for finally owning a gun to which he casually tells Hideyoshi to take a running start so he can shoot him. Why do something so insane and chaotic? Because he was bored. And that's it. The whole event is played off as just being normal. And the hilarious part? As for Oda Nobunaga, one of Japan's most bloodthirsty, gun-obsessed, monstrous warlords, I could easily buy that he would do something this dangerous and haphazard out of sheer boredom. Then we've got Hideyoshi, who historically turned into one of Japan's greatest shogun, but started off as a sandal bear for Nobunaga. And the anime works this in an amazingly clever way called The Secret of the Sandals. I definitely don't want to spoil anything, but let me just say that not only is the dry humor great, but what the episode says for what kind of man Hideyoshi was is phenomenal. Then there's Ieyasu Tokugawa, who... Um... Hey... Alright, so let me go ahead and address this, because you're probably going to be distracted by these giant balls until I talk about them, right? So, there's this interesting thing about the three great shogun of Japan. They each had their own special nicknames and identifications with different animals. In the case of Ieyasu, he was often referred to as Tanuki behind his back. Though we see Tanuki as being benevolent, frolicky pranksters today, such was not always the case. In older times, Tanuki were considered one of the trickiest yokai in all of Japan, second only to the Kitsune. Tanuki back in the day were seen as cunning, lying, shape-shifting, untrustworthy creatures. You never knew what to expect next from them. In parallel, in his quest to unify Japan and keep it that way, Ieyasu used all manner of cunning and even underhanded strategies at times in order to seal his victory. And it was his insane level of craftiness and unpredictability that earned him the name Tanuki. But as far as the giant ball sack goes, well, ever since the Edo period, Tanuki were always artistically represented as having them for various purposes. But we'll get into the origins of that in another video. Toyotomi Hideyoshi, on the other hand, got his animal nickname through a more unfortunate set of circumstances. The guy just looked like a monkey. 
I mean, that's kind of it. Some depictions of Toyotomi in anime and video games portray him as being a giant of a man, but truth be told, he was a far more lanky man with a face resembling that of a monkey. So, unfortunately for Toyotomi, history has recognized him not only for his crazy starburst headwear, but his physical connections to primates for eternity. Finally, you've got Oda Nobunaga, the demon king of the sixth heaven, and he's a freaking tiny bird. Traditionally speaking, Nobunaga has been depicted in anime and games from being a demonically insane man to a literal demon. But in Sin Goku Choju Giga, he's a tiny little lark. I mean, why? The first thing that went through my mind was why is one of, if not the most notorious man in Japan, a minuscule tiny speck of a sparrow? Well, there's a famous poem that just about everyone born and raised in Japan has heard at least once in their life. It helps illustrate what defined each of the three great shogun during their career. If a bird doesn't sing, I will wait for it to sing, Iyasu Tokugawa. If a bird doesn't sing, I will make it sing, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. If a bird doesn't sing, I will kill it, Oda Nobunaga. This simple poem passed down through the years has been one of the most simplistic ways of describing the level of cruelty that Oda unleashed upon Japan during his quest to conquer it. And while to the untrained eye, the choice of making his anthropomorphized animal representation a tiny little bird, I feel there really couldn't be a better way to depict one of Japan's greatest psychos. There's so much more I want to talk about this anime, but you just have to go see it for yourself in order to really appreciate it. I mean, the show retells the assault on Orowada Castle as a freaking manzai comedy act. I just... go see it. Go right now to Crunchyroll and watch it. It's free, it's amazing, and if your friends or family ever try to tell you that watching anime makes you stupid, show this to them and tell them exactly why Tokugawa's giant ball sack makes him the best shogun in Japan. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone, and a big thank you to my lovely patrons for supporting my content. If you want to see even more examples of how anime makes you smart, click on those annotations and links in the description for even more culture and anime. But until next time everyone, this is Gaijin Goomba, signing out.